that you have declared an independency, and by the way, in the new code of laws which I suppose it will be necessary for you to make, I desire that you would remember the ladies, and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited power into the hands of the husbands, remembering all men would be tyrants if they could. If particular care and attention is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. That your sex is naturally tyrannical is a truth so thoroughly established as to admit no, of no dispute, but of such as you wish to be happy, willingly give up the harsh okay. title of master for the more tender and endearing one of friend. Okay. Why then not put it out of the power of the vicious and lawless to use us with the cruelty and indignity with impunity? Men of sense in all ages abhor those customs which treat us only as the vassals of your sex. Regard us then as beings placed by providence under your protection, and in imitation of the supreme being, make us use of that power only for our happiness. As to declarations of independency, be patient. Read our privateering laws and our commercial laws. What signifies a word? As to your extraordinary code of laws, I cannot but laugh. We have been told that our struggle has loosened the bands of government everywhere that children and apprentices were disobedient, that schools and colleges were girl turbulent, that Indians slighted their guardians and Negroes grew insolent to their masters. But your letter was the first intimation that another tribe, more numerous and powerful than all the rest, were girl discontented. This is rather too coarse of a compliment, but you are so saucy I won't blot out. Depend on it. We know better than to repeal our masculine systems. Although they are in full force, you know they are little more than theory. We dare not exert our power in its full attitude. We are obliged to go fair and softly, and in practice, you know we are the subjects. We only have the name of masters. And rather than give up this, which would completely subject us to the disposition of a petticoat, I hope General Washington and all our brave heroes would fight. I'm sure every good politician would plot, as long as he could, against despotism, empire, monarchy, aristocracy, oligarchy, or ocracy. A letter from John. Hmm. Reply to my letter. Hmm. Oh, John, you simply can't be generous towards the ladies, can you? Well, if you don't look out, we could form a very serious rebellion and overthrow the power of all men. unacceptable. We are equal to men and deserve the equal rights.
I cannot say that I think you very generous to the ladies, for whilst you are proclaiming peace and goodwill to men, emancipating all nations, you insist upon retaining an absolute power over wives. But you must remember that arbitrary power is like most other things which are very hard, very liable to be broken, and notwithstanding all your wise laws and maxims, we have it in our power not only to free ourselves, but to subdue out our masters, and without violence, throw both your natural and legal authority at our feet.